Today was a little bit different day in some ways. I think we, uh, tomorrow's a bigger kind of scrimmage day for us. So we try to lighten the load a little bit. Tell the, tell the offensive line that, right? Just because we took off the uh, shoulder pads and went in spiders, it doesn't really lighten the load, but maybe the impacts of things, uh, a little bit of the force of things because tomorrow's a little bit bigger day for us. Um, but I think we're progressing along. I think that we've had your normal, you know, dings in camp, uh, but I think we've been pretty, pretty healthy for the most part. Um, you know, and I think that's a good thing. That's a, that's a sign that, you know, these guys have worked with Coach Brady and those guys over the summer and through all the winter to be able to withstand some of this. And, you know, now, now as you get into that 11 to the 17, it's really about the mental side of the game. And uh, this is where we got to challenge ourselves because if you're going to be consistent and you're going to play your best ball at the end of the year, you got to be able to practice really well from that practice 11 to 17 because that's, the, that's where, so to speak, the grind happens. You mentioned the old line. Sometimes you open practice with that blocking drill, old lineman versus D lineman, yeah. linebackers. The other day, I think it was five zip for old line. I I'm guessing as <laughs> you're, on, on the one hand, you're happy to see the pass blocking, but as a defensive guy? <laughs> no, it, it has nothing really to do with you know, whether it's O-line versus D-line, it's just okay. to see, when you put that thing down at the very beginning, it's just to see who competes. Okay. And for me, it has little to really do with, is there who wins? Okay. We put it up, we have fun with it as a team usually, which we didn't do that one yet. Um, and the O-line's a little bit upset at me right now, but, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll be able to put that up there and make sure we get somebody up there to do the judgment. Um, but it's really about just competing. It's like, you never know what's gonna happen. The ball's gonna go down, you never know when. You know, you walk onto that field, you gotta be ready. And so to me, it's more about, do you see the competitive spirit? Do you see the mindset? Does the guy gets called out? If he got to step up there and do it, um, those guys that worry about winning and losing, those are the ones that usually don't enjoy the game as much. Those guys that are just competitors and don't look at it anything more than a competition and a way to get better. That's kind of what we're trying to make sure we're emphasizing. Luke, what stands out about uh, Colin Hitchler and his ability to relate to people, especially <laughs> when it comes to? Well, I think that's six, seven years of being around a lot of the things that we do and, and, and I say that in a way that like he's been able to take a lot of stuff from me just being together for seven years um, but I think in the long run he's been able to see a lot of really really good coaches not me but like guys that are around him whether it was Marcus Freeman to you know just so many guys that we've had at that time um, that I've been with him in those seven years and he's an intel he's a constant learner and so I think guys that are constant learners that don't realize, don't think they've got all the answers, they watch and they learn from others, whether it's how to relate to guys, how to you know, coach, different things you can do. And I would tell you that the greatest thing is, is he can internalize, he can take things, he can take some constructive criticism, and he finds ways to continue to get better. And where he was even seven years ago when we first kind of met, I mean, to where he is now is just a, you know, it's, it's awesome for him and it's, it's a, you know, it says a lot about him. And I'm not saying that like, well, he was bad when he got here and we made him, no. But the way that he's kind of developed as a coach and, and a recruiter is really unbelievable. You don't see guys make the jump from D2 to our conference. Nazir is doing that. And I know Matt, you too have Matt's opinion to rely on that down, but is that a tough projection to make at all when you're looking at film and it's not, you know, it's not the same he's going to see here? What, what it is. That? That's why recruiting is hard too. I mean, you can't rip open a chest and find out what that, what's inside, right? And, and the great thing is, is having that connection with, you know, with Coach that, that he could tell me, I don't care what he runs, how fast is he, how big, like, is he a competitor? And when you're a competitor and you're put in a new environment, you're going to grow. And I think that, to me, is the biggest thing. It's hard to predict, right? It's hard to predict sometimes watching high school kids, right? Five-star, four-star, three-star, okay? that has natural abilities is what the stars really tell you. The ability to adapt and adjust and grow is, I think, what makes people great. And he's done a great job, and you've just seen it from the time he's been thrown in the midst of maybe some guys that are bigger, faster, and stronger than what he had been around or played against, and he continues to raise his level. So I think the future is bright for him because he's such a competitor. We've seen Braden Locke struggle with some turnovers here in the fall so far after a pretty good springs. How do you think he's handled that process of maturing and facing? Oh, we'll see. I mean, he's this really intelligent kid. And, and from the outside looking at it, he doesn't seem like it's something that gets him really down. I mean, obviously, he's hard upon himself. 
Um, but he's another one of those guys that's a constant learner. You know, he's a guy that you got to kick out of the office. So I know he's hard on himself, but I know he has the confidence in himself to continue to grow. And to me, that's the key, you know. It, at that position in particular, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody sees um, your ability to move forward is really critical. And I think that's what we'll learn from today. We had a couple picks today, too. And um, it's okay, right? I mean, it's, it's all a part of the process of growing and learning. You know, we don't play tomorrow. And we got to find ways to get better at it. But it can't steal your confidence. And I think that's where, I think with him, what I've seen the most is even though he's had maybe a day or two where he's thrown that, it hasn't affected him in the long run. So we'll continue to grow. Would you describe Mordecai similarly, the way he handles if he feels he doesn't play as well as he should? Yeah. I would explain, describe him a little bit more as an ultimate competitor. And we've had guys in the past that are like that. And if, I would never say ultimate competitors are the greatest thing. But like, you have to be able to handle it at that position. And I remember I had a, we had a guy, Kobe Bryant, who was a corner that was like an ultimate competitor. And, I did, used to try to say, you don't not. I don't want you to not be a competitor, but you've at that position in particular, you've got to be able to control some emotions because it's a little different than if you're a D lineman or an O lineman in the midst of what it is that you're doing. So um, he's been around, he's done it. Uh, he is an ultimate competitor, which shows me that he's always going to continue to get better. Um, you know, but there's one of those things where your emotions can get even too high at times and cause other issues at that position. That's knucklehead D lineman. It's all right, right? I mean, the mistakes we make are two, three yards, and you know, we move on. Different at other positions. This offense is obviously doing some, some different things from, from the past. One of them is moving away from a fullback. Just in general, what's your perspective on how you think the fullback fits into modern football? I, I still think there's a place. I mean, and, you know, it's, I guess you label people as fullbacks. I think the only evolution of the game is that guy is labeled a little bit different now. He's more of a specialist, right? He's either an H-back, he's a tight end hybrid. I mean, it's just the ability to be able to do more than one thing is so key, you know? For me as a defensive guy, I think the most important thing when you recruit guys and when you got guys on your team is, do they have multi, can, you be, can they do multiple things, right? I mean, I learned from a, a good buddy of mine that played for the Patriots for a long time, but there was only one guy on that team that had one position, you know? He happened to be the quarterback. Everybody else better understand how to do things and better have some ability to do other things. And I think that's a great depiction of what the fullback is and in, in, in our offense of what the tight end is. And so I think we got some unique guys in Jackson and, and Riley Nowakowski that are just uniquely different, you know, whether they were a fullback in the past or they're a tight end. Um, they're a really good football player that finds their way to, to help us in a lot of ways. Was there any Oh, is he? Yeah. Is that, no. Is that the kind of guy you're talking about? Then? It, it is. Yeah. It is. I mean, and, and we were similar in the time with him, using him in, at Cincy, and, and we probably used him a little bit more as a, as a tight end, but grew and morphed into things. And there's a reason why he was drafted. Now, yes, he's a great football player. Yes, he's a play hard guy. Uh, but his ability to do more than just be a tight end or just be a fullback, the versatility is so critical in the game today. Was there any pushback here just from any traditionalists when they heard that you, you know, may not have it the way they had it? I'm sure there was. I just didn't hear them. I'm sure there's still a lot of people out there that are kind of curious and, you know, when they come to the first game or so, we'll be in their minds, oh, well, if it was, we didn't get the third and one. And if we'd have had a fullback in there, we'd have got it, right? I mean, we understand. I mean, um, but I think you'll, they'll be surprised to see guys that line up in similar types of positions and do similar types of things. Um, but don't get labeled just as one thing. Yeah. Luke, you knew the top tier program that uh, Brady brought over for strength and conditioning in terms of what do you see from the guys and how it's paid off so far early in camp? You know, what, what is it like seeing that? You know? I'm hoping and believing that we've had a knock on wood, a pretty clean camp so far. I mean, we've got ham, a couple hamstrings. We had a thumb, um, you know, we got a groin here and there, but by nature, we've been pretty good and, and we push them. You know, it's not like we were trying to back off. I mean, these first 11 days are going to be full throttle, and uh, they've handled it really well. And I hope and believe that it has a lot to do mentally, but also physically with you know how they've trained throughout the entire winter and how they've trained throughout the entire summer. That gives them an opportunity to come into you know this game where I mean, you you don't get to do this, right? I mean, you have spring ball, you know, you get 15 practices. We've had 11 in you know 12 days, you know, so you you can't prepare for this other than you know in ways that you train yourself. Um, in the weight room. So 
knock on wood, I mean, they've done, a, I think, a really, really, really good job. But I think more so they've trained the minds as much as anything. But you talked about the ultimate competitor. There was a very unofficial viral post from somebody on social media that ranked you as the coach they would least like to fight in college. <laughs> Tell my wife that. <laughs> that kind of spurred on your high school wrestling <laughs> record. Can you kind of talk about how that background as a competitor helps you as a coach and leading young men? Uh, I, I've, if people have asked me, like, okay, hey, if you were a football coach, what would you be? And I say, I'd be a wrestling coach, probably a high school wrestling coach. Um, but I think it's just, you know, I, I give a lot of the credit, not the credit, but who I am today about where I started. And that's probably at four and five years old of starting and being a wrestler and being in a wrestling room because my uncle was a high school wrestling coach. And I think more than anything, it just kind of trains your mind. Um, if you know the sport, it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's an individual sport, and it is a competition every single day. And I think for me, that's the way I grew up. Um, that's the environment that I try to create as much as anything, um, you know, but uh, it's, it's not always, there's a balance to it as well. So sometimes I gotta pull myself away from that mindset at times to make sure we understand that there's some other things that grow, that have grown and evolved throughout this, but uh, it's, it's always interesting. That's why I stay off of the social media stuff. Um, you know, but I don't do that anymore. I don't wrestle anymore unless provoked. I hate to uh, spoil hard knocks, but you know, the way that Sauce Gardner's been getting a lot of publicity too, Aaron Rodgers saying at the Hall of Fame game, you're going to be here one day. <laughs> I, I can already see the smile too on your face. You know, just talking about who he is, who he was at Cincinnati, and just watching him flourish eyes in his pro career. You know, what, what are your thoughts there? Well, we hope, it, we wish he was with the Packers, but that is what it is. Um, no, he's a, he is a great example of what an ultimate competitor is. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. They come in, in different ways. Like there's some guys that are like ultra, like, like mindset, you know, focused in, locked in. And there's guys that are ultimate competitors. They kind of do it in a different way. He does it in a unique way. It's, you know, kind of fun and happy and smiling. And even as we saw last year, I think he had a cheese head and somebody knocked it off. But it was like, it's almost like he's the guy that learned this is who he is and this is how he's gonna be. And I think it's a great example to a lot of our guys. You know, there's people that watch the Michael Jordan 30 for 30 and think, okay, that's the kind of leader you gotta be. You gotta rip people. And no, to be a leader, you gotta be yourself. You know, and ultimately, if you're yourself, you'll be able to be consistent. And I know we're talking about Ahmad and he's a phenomenal football player, but he's a unique individual as a competitor and a leader because that is him and that is himself. You mentioned the ability to do more than one thing. Does that translate into that dollar package where you've got a guy like yeah. Waller? I guess you can put him anywhere in that. It is, that, that's kind of what we try to try to do. And, and you know, we're, we're still morphing a lot of different things. And I think it's, it's going good for the defense of, of the ability to have some balance in what we're doing. Um, but we're going to continue to kind of push that to find ways to use guys, you know, that they're not just pigeonholed. Hey, this guy's an outside linebacker. Or this guy's a nose guard. Or this guy's a defensive tackle. No, he has abilities to do some different things, whether it's he's a D lineman, you know, but he can do some other things. He's an outside linebacker. He's an inside linebacker. Like, we want guys with much more versatility, and we're going to continue to grow them. And that has a lot to do with how we train them as well. You've seen kind of a top group wide receiver being at the kick return or punt returner spot so far in practice. Do you see that as you want one of those guys to step up and emerge, or is it situational like a couple of those guys who get in there? No, I mean, we, at that position in particular, punt returner, it's got to be the most trustworthy person. You know, I think Chim has done it, you know, and I think that if we started tomorrow, that Chim would be the guy that's out there. Um, but those are the things that, uh, you know, we'll just continue to do. It's, it's not set in stone. You've got to have a few of them. You know, kick return is another unique situation. It's not just a guy that's a great wide receiver, a great running back. It has a real uniqueness to, you know, the ability to see something and hit it and be fearless at that position in particular. Um, so those are the things that, you know, might be in year one, the most difficult thing to try to figure out because you don't go live kickoff. You don't put a live return guy back there in, in the punts very often. So in year one, you're kind of assuming a lot of those things and having to watch some of the things from the past. So um, that'll be something that's going constantly are trying to figure out for sure. In regards to Will, are you confident or optimistic he'll be able to ramp back up? And yeah, I, I, Will's a quick, quick healer as well. I think he, uh, he had an injury last year that they said was six to eight weeks or eight to ten weeks, and I think he was trying to get back out there at five. I mean, so he's a quick healer, and I think he'll – be in good shape and you know we'll have to play it by ear as we continue to move forward. I'd say with someone like Tucker Ashcraft, I think earlier this week was getting some reps with the twos mm -hmm. and some, some of the first team reps too. Just 
as a true freshman, just how has he adapted? And I know with some departures at that position group, yeah. too, how has he progressed so far? Really well, it's been a great, uh, it's been great for us. I mean, obviously the, you know, kind of down a little bit that position with some guys, um, but he's emerged pretty quick, you know, coming from the West Coast, not knowing a ton about, about him. And um, it's been pretty unique. And uh, obviously that's a, that's a position that is, that is really, I think, difficult in our, in our system. I mean, it is all over the place. So for a young guy to be able to pick those things up, it's not easy, you know, but he's got a skill set that I think is pretty unique. Um, he looks a little bit more like the guys that we've had in the past, but moves a little bit more like probably the guys that are the future, and, um, which is a heck, of a heck of a mix. So trying to get him up to speed as a true freshman, um, but you're going to see him. He's going to play this year. Sticking kind of tight end there. Wednesday we didn't, or Thursday, excuse me, we didn't see Jack Pugh at practice. Is that a personal situation? Or yeah. Was that Hopefully he'll be back probably with us later this afternoon or tonight or tomorrow or something like that. But um, yeah, just a kind of evolving thing. Exactly three weeks from kickoff. Are there any things that start ramping up at practice that you may do differently or not really? No, it, it, it we're, we'll get through tomorrow and then kind of switch a little bit of a phase types of things. You know, the first 11 practices, 12 practices are, you know, really kind of a mental side of things. And then as you get to that 12 to 17, you kind of, you know, you shift a little bit. We'll start maybe doing a little bit less ones on ones and some ones on twos and things like that, but we still got to continue to push. You know, there's a lot of development that we have to do, not just as players, but as a team and as a coaching staff, you know, as we making sure all the positions understand what it is we're all doing together. You know, we haven't all been together in the fire, um, you know, as a one. And so, so this time of camp is important for us, every bit as much important for them. Good. You've got a new trainer on staff, Brian Lund, uh, departing. What's that relationship like with a coach and trainer? Do you kind of just let them do their thing or how do you no. approach that? No, <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're in this like us. And I think that's the unique thing. Um, Matt coming in here new, uh, he's all in. And I'm not saying it wasn't like that before, but like the only way I know how to do it, everybody that touches our kids, our program, I want to be, they live and die, they go up and down on the things that happen on the football field as well. You know, whether it's wins and losses and how a kid handles things and the kid on and off the field, everybody that's 100% fully invested, you know, I think they're unique into us. And he's only been here for maybe a month now. Um, it's actually really a great situation just because we're building a relationship and, you know, going through a lot of these things together. But uh, I think he's unique to understand that and, and want that. And I think that's, that's a, that's a big deal. And uh, I've been, if I'd have said there was one thing coming from where I came from that was maybe one of the better things in the last six years was that training staff that uh, I had a chance to be around. And I learned from them every bit as much as anything. And um, so bringing that same kind of relationship, and I know that I don't want to use the word, the, the COVID word, but I know for me at that time was something where I built an incredible relationship with our training staff and our doctors just through those tough times. And that showed me how important that relationship is. All right, thank you, appreciate it.